Hey there my wedding planning friends and welcome back to my channel. It's been a little bit since I've recorded a video um, with everything that's going on. I just, I don't know, I felt really weird coming up with content to share with you about planning your wedding when a lot of people have been faced with the difficult decision to postpone their wedding and I know that might be a really touchy subject for some people and I don't know, I just felt really guilty and really sad and kind of got down the last week and I hope you guys are all doing okay. Um, anyone whose wedding has been affected by this COVID-19 situation, I am so, so deeply sorry for you. But I know that this will all be over soon and no matter what, you're going to marry your person and I am so excited for you. So that being said, I wanted to come back and help you plan your wedding and get you excited for whenever your wedding might be and hopefully fill you with some encouragement that you can still move forward and get excited about your wedding again. Also, today's topic is all about saving money and who doesn't like to save money on their wedding? So without further ado, today we're going to talk about the five ways that you can save the most money on your wedding. going to be the item that you will likely be faced with spending the most amount, amount of money on in one in one area. So I really, if you're on a strict budget or if you're really trying to cut back on spending wherever you can within your wedding, I would recommend spending a lot of time doing research when it comes to finding your venue. So go see as many venues as, as you have to, go tour them, see what's all involved, and actually sit down and do the calculations to figure out what you're getting with that venue for what you're paying. So for example, some venues are an all-inclusive venue, so you rent the venue, but you also get all of their tables, chairs, maybe even linens, they set it up for you, they set up your ceremony chairs, um, and all that kind of stuff, and maybe even teardown is included. And for that reason, it's probably a little bit more on the pricey side. However, if you compare that to a venue that is just the venue, and it doesn't really have any of those other amenities, or you'd have to go in and rent all those items through a third-party rental company anyways and pay for the delivery, pay for the setup, all of that extra stuff. When you sit down and do the math on those things, there's a good chance that the venue that is all-inclusive is actually going to be overall less expensive when you add up all of the extra things that you'd have to get for the other venue. So be aware of that and make sure that you're really doing your research and calculating out exactly what you're getting for your venue because while the average venue is probably around gosh, probably four to $5,000, at least in this area, and I know that that is much higher in many other areas. There's even places, you know, an hour away that are $8,000 for, for just a matter of hours. So it really depends on where you are, but there's always going to be less expensive options when it comes to a venue. So do your research and find those. Next, photographers can also add up very quickly. There are so many wedding photographers out there and the price range is really actually kind of crazy. There are some, I would say on average, a wedding photographer would charge probably about $3,000, $3,500. I feel like that's probably average in most places. Again, you're going to have that end of the spectrum, but you're also going to encounter plenty of wedding photographers that charge upwards of five, maybe even $10,000 for your wedding. So that being said, again, you need to make sure that you're doing your research, ask around your friends who have gotten married, what, who they use for their wedding photographer, what they charge so that you are aware of what you're going to be getting yourself into when it comes to a wedding photographer. And if you have a planner or if you have somebody that's in the industry that you can ask, try and find somebody that's fairly new to the industry. So it doesn't mean that they're new to photography. A lot of wedding photographers have been doing photography for many, many years as a hobby and they've decided to break out into a more professional field. Likely when a photographer is new to wedding photography, they're going to be charging a lot less because they're trying to build up their portfolio and get weddings under their belt before they really market themselves and put themselves out there to be able to charge what a lot of the other wedding photographers are charging. So that's a good place to start, especially if you're really trying to cut back on your budget and not spend thousands and thousands of dollars where you don't necessarily have to. So if your wedding photographs aren't one of the things that are your biggest priority, where you really, really, really want those beautiful photos that you can put all over your house and you're willing to spend basically whatever it takes to, to get your favorite photo photographer, then I would recommend doing research and finding someone that's just starting to break into that industry. On that note, um, if you haven't seen the other video that I posted on creating a wedding budget in totality, um, I'll link that right here. but. 
definitely check that one out. It gives you a more overall idea of how to create your writing budget and what numbers to expect to see and all of that sort of thing. Um, and in that video, I also talk about how important it is to set your priorities. So I'll mention that in this one too, that before you're even making decisions on your vendors and your venue and all that sort of thing, it's important to sit down with your partner and figure out what your priorities are. Like where are you willing to spend more money and where is it not as important to you? So perhaps the location is really, really important and that's what you want to make sure that you splurge on. You want to have an amazing venue or a venue that you can create to be all your own and something maybe that's um, in close proximity to where your guests will be staying and that sort of thing. Um, or maybe your photographer is your highest priority and you want to make sure that that's where you're, where you're willing to spend more money. So once you figure that out, you can figure out where to divvy up your money a little bit better and where you're willing to kind of slash the prices and uh, compromise a little bit with what you get. So after photographer, um, invitations and all paper goods in general, that is something that can really add up super quick and a lot of people are surprised by this because especially if you're sending out save the dates as well as formal invitations, if you're including RSVP cards in there, um, if you're including any directions or any extra sheets of paper, that all adds up a lot. The printing costs, the paper costs, also the postage. Postage adds up like crazy. If you're sending 200 invites out, 250, you're looking at probably a couple thousand dollars. You add up all of the envelopes, addresses, um, if you're paying someone to address them, if you're having to print them on address labels, all those extra costs and printing costs and postage it really adds up a lot. So again, do some research on where to get your wedding invitations. I know Etsy has a lot of really beautiful invitations and paper goods, but they also tend to be a little bit more expensive because they are all individually handmade. You can even design invitations yourself if you're crafty at all or if you know your way around a graphic design program on a computer and that'll save you at least the design costs and the printing costs um, through a third party. Additionally, you don't have to say, send save the dates and invitations. That's not something you have to do. Um, I recommend it for anyone that has a lot of guests that are traveling so that they know what date to look into getting plane tickets and hotel reservations and that sort of thing. Um, but it's really not something that you have to formally send out. You can even do this in the form of an evite. I've seen that done before. I've had clients where they're going to save the money on printing and postage on save the dates and just send out an evite to all of their guests. So at least they know when the date is, what to plan for, where it'll be, like the, the really important facts, and then save your money to send out the formal invitations um, within the, the last few months before your wedding. That'll have the direction invita or the direction instructions, uh, the time, location, and any other registry or important information that you need to let your guests be aware of. Number four, the item that will most directly impact your budget that a lot of people don't realize is your guest count. When you're inviting all those people that you want to be a part of your wedding, it's more than just having those bodies there to celebrate with you. It's the chair, it's the table, it's the linen, it's the plate, it's the food, it's the drinks. Basically everything that's a part of your wedding, you're paying per guest. So the more guests you have, the more money you're going to spend on those items. So if you're really trying to cut back and save money on your wedding, start with your guest list. You don't have to invite every single person you're, uh, you're related to. You don't have to invite everyone that you have ever been friends with. If you're trying to save money, just stick to your close friends and family. Stick to the friends that you have talked to, that you have relationships with, that you have spent time with in the last couple years only. You don't need to invite your college roommate that you haven't spoken to in seven years. It's okay. People get it. So don't feel like you have to, to invite every single person on your list, everyone that your mom wants you to invite. I know that this gets really tricky and really difficult when it comes to family. But this is the biggest way you will save money on your wedding, hands down, is to cut back on your guest list. Last but not least, probably an obvious one, is decor and When it comes to your wedding decor and your flowers, don't overdo it. You don't need a lot, especially if you have a really beautiful venue or if it's in a space that's really um, scenic and you're able to have an outdoor wedding. Let the nature do the talking for you. Just have the florals that you need. Have your bouquets that you need, maybe do some garland with a little bit of flowers sprinkled in, but you don't need to overdo it with the, with the decorations. I know that Pinterest kind of throws at us that you need to have these really immaculate weddings with all those great pretty details, 
But what they don't tell you is that those weddings that you see on Pinterest are thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And if, that, that, if that's not something that you're willing to dish out for your wedding day, don't do it. You don't need to. There's no rule that says to have a wedding it needs to be really beautiful and tons of decor everywhere and that you need to really wow your guests. While that's great and that's fun and, and everyone likes to do that, it's not necessary and if you don't have it in your budget, don't do it. You're going to regret it later and I promise you. If you have the time, there's a lot of things that you can DIY for your wedding. Um, full disclosure though, if you are planning to DIY anything in your wedding, don't overdo this either because you will drive yourself crazy and it always takes longer than you expect it to. So if you're, if you're incorporating anything that you're creating yourself or making yourself, I say do 80-20. So don't do more than 20% of your decorations or any aspect of your wedding by yourself or you're just probably not going to enjoy it unless you have a lot of experience doing whatever it is that you're going to be doing. Also, don't leave it to the last minute. If you're getting married in the, in the summer, spend some of those winter months working on the crafts, working on the DIY things that you want to have in your wedding so that you're not spending those final weeks, final months leading up to your wedding day stressing about all these things that you have to finish and get done. So there you have it. There are the five easiest ways to save money on your wedding. If you're looking to cut back on your wedding budget, start with these five items. I promise you there are more options than you think there are and you don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to have a really beautiful wedding. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to make sure that you don't miss any further wedding planning videos and we'll see you next time.